scandal es, missing excavator scandal uh, nini na yari a party no eh she aka honsem di yanko party no head office wo adabraka akra ha ni yanko nko fawon press conference ya ba eko si senju medie no eh tuwa so stay with us the approved judgment by the crown court of Southwark, england and the district court of columbia in a case involving airbus se the giant aircraft manufacturers second we will speak on latest revelations of massive corruption and thievery in a kufuado's so-called fight against galamse and so without wasting time i will set the ball rolling with the airbus scandal ladies and gentlemen of the press last sunday the much respected former attorney general and minister of justice mrs Mareta brew appear upon issued a statement which primarily sought to correct the mischievous twist to the approved judgments of the crown court of southwark and the district court of columbia involving airbus se she basically stated that reports by a section of the media that airbus paid bribes to the government of ghana between 2009 and 2015 are false and do not reflect the said approved judgments ladies and gentlemen the said investigation was triggered by a complaint from competitors of airbus over suspected violation of OECD rules. A careful reading of the approved judgments of the Crown Court of Southwark and the District Court of Columbia on the matter shows that the entire case is about legal infractions by employees and agents of Airbus and nothing more. And I would like to repeat this point for emphasis. A careful reading of the approved judgments of the Crown Court of Southwark, England, and the District Court of Columbia shows that the entire case is about legal infractions of employees and agents of Airbus and nothing more. According to the approved judgments, one, Airbus on their own accord, Airbus on their own accord, engaged intermediaries or better still, hired agents to help them sell military aircrafts to Ghana between the years 2009 to 2015. Number two, while the use of agents or business partners is common practice with multinational companies, the approved judgments held that Airbus failed to follow OECD rules in appointing their business intermediaries. Number three, the approved judgments further found that payment by Airbus of success-based commission to their intermediaries was in excess of agreed of the agreed 5% commission as captured in the transaction agreement. And then number four, whereas there have been claims that success-based commissions were paid to agents of Airbus with the intent to induce or reward improper favor by the said government official one in the report it is instructive to note that there is no indication i repeat there is no indication either in the approved judgment of the crown court of southwark or the approved judgment of the district court of columbia that any such inducement took place and let me repeat this point again for emphasis. We have taken our time to carefully study 
both approved judgments, one coming from the Crown Court of Southwark, England, and the other coming from the District Court of Columbia. And in summary, both approved judgments have to do with legal infractions by employees and agents of Airbus and nothing more. And we've given you that summary, you know, of the said infractions. The first is that Airbus as a private company on their own accord engage intermediaries to help them sell military aircrafts to Ghana between the years 2009 to 2015. That has got nothing to do with the government of Ghana. Secondly, while the use of agents and business partners is common practice with multinational companies, the approved judgments held that Airbus, followed, Airbus failed to follow OECD rules in the appointment of their intermediaries. That, again, has got nothing to do with the government of Ghana. Number three, the approved judgments further found that payment by Airbus of success-based commission to their agents exceeded the agreed 5% commission which was captured in the transaction agreement. That, again, has got nothing to do with the government of Ghana. Then, finally, whereas there have been claims that success-based commissions were paid by Airbus to their agents with the intent of inducing or rewarding improper favor from the said government official one, it is instructive to note that there is no such indication or there is no indication in any of the approved judgments on the matter that any such inducement took place. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's, get, let's be clear about certain basic facts. First, no ex-government official of Ghana is cited in any part of the approved judgments for receiving a bribe or demanding a bribe or committing any criminal offense. No ex-government official of Ghana is cited for either demanding or receiving a bribe or for committing any criminal offense. In fact, not even the unnamed so-called government official one is cited in the report or approved judgments for demanding or receiving a bribe or for committing any offense. This point becomes even clearer when just opposed with the facts narrated in the approved judgment of the Crown Court of South Turk with regard to countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Taiwan, where the UK SFO made findings on how bribes were actually disbursed to senior executives of airline companies. Now, maybe I should explain this. What we mean here is that if you take the same approved judgment, which deals with Airbus's activities, not only in Ghana, but in other countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, and so on. It was found by the UK Serial Fraud Office that in the case of Taiwan, Indonesia, and Malaysia, bribes were actually paid to senior executives of airline companies who dealt with Airbus. And all those findings were indicated in the UK SFO report and the approved judgments. But in the case of Ghana, no such indication is given in either the UK SFO report or the approved judgments. We can state with a large degree of certainty that the UK SFO would have stated that bribes were paid to the said government official one if they had found so in their investigations. Instead, they carefully chose the worst quote, intended to induce, unquote, without more. And there is no indication that this intention was actualized. Therefore, to the extent that the said government official one is not cited for any offense in any of the approved judgments, his or her identity is completely immaterial. And let me repeat this. To the extent that the said government official one is not cited for any offense in any of the approved judgments, his or her identity is completely immaterial. 
Second, there is no finding in any of the approved judgments that Ghana lost any money through the said transactions. No such finding is contained in any of the approved judgments. The fact is, the government of Ghana paid fair commercial value for the aircraft and was not in any way shortchanged. Indeed, the Ghana Air Force conducted its own independent technical and financial evaluation of the transactions in line with best practices in the military. Third, there is no finding in any of the approved judgments that the transactions and the processes leading to same violated any law. In fact, the first transaction under which success based commission was paid by Airbus to their intermediaries, adhered to the public procurement law, and received and received the legal opinion of the then Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Honorable Martin A. B. K. Amidu, before it was finally approved by the August House of Parliament. And we encourage you to get the parliamentary hands out of that day, study it for yourself, and you will see that all these material facts were captured in the proceedings of Parliament leading to the approval of the transaction. It went through all the, need, the necessary procurement processes. The Central Tender Review Board of the Public Procurement Authority approved it. The Air Force conducted their own financial and technical evaluation. They did due diligence, submitted all those reports to the Parliamentary Subcommittee, which conceded the transaction. Same were presented to the plenary after, you know, members of Parliament debated the issue extensively the transactions were approved by parliament and so no law was violated and ghana it did not lose any money a as a result FM. of these transactions additionally there is no finding in any of the approved job, approved judgments that the government of ghana or any government official engaged the services or paid any monies to any intermediary relative to the said transactions. Therefore, any infractions from the engagement and payment of intermediaries by Airbus SA are entirely its business. Distinguished friends from the media, it is clear from the foregoing that the whole Airbus case, like I've already indicated, is about legal infractions by employees and agents of Airbus SE and nothing more. Foreign companies who do business with Ghana have their own internal modus operandi. The nature of the infractions committed by Airbus SE as contained in the approved judgments as such that the government of Ghana at the time had no way of knowing of those infractions. It could see saying on a simple FM. So, ladies and gentlemen, the indecent haste with which Yabuabia Samoa of the MPP jumped to pass judgment on the NDC relative to this matter was pathetic and most reckless to say the least. No serious minded person would draw conclusions based on conjecture and willful misinterpretation of the approved judgment of the UK Crown Court and the District Court of Columbia. And so we treat with contempt his statements and those of other MPP Highlands who may have thought wrongly that this was an opportunity for political equalization. Yabu Abiyan Samwa is a lawyer by profession and he knows per the training lawyers receive that it is reckless and irresponsible for you to cast aspersions on the character of innocent people based on conjecture and speculations. No one was mentioned in that report to have engaged in any criminal offense. Not even the unnamed so-called government of Ijawan. 
And so to engage in the say, 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 more, you know, conspiracy theory he engaged in a couple of days ago is most shameful, you know, coming from a lawyer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Airbus matter is nothing like the recent conclusively established corruption cases, such as the doling out of a hopping 136 million Ghana cities as equivalent to $24 million for the private hotel project of the in-law of President Ekufuado, Dr. Nyantechi, the missing excavator scandals, the missing 400 tricycle scandals, just to mention a few. This Airbus matter is empty. It is a clear case of much ado about nothing, and it is nothing compared or nothing like con recent conclusively established cases of corruption that I have outlined. The MPP should be reminded, ladies and gentlemen of the press, that multiple ambassadors from Western nations have in recent times publicly decried alarming spate of corruption under President Ekufuado. Strangely, President Ekufuado only a few weeks ago shamelessly, shamelessly warned ambassadors and foreign envoys in Ghana not to speak publicly about the alarming highs of corruption in his government. Whether it was the merry miscellaneous scandal in which President Ekufuado gave executive approval to a deal which had been bloated by an amount of $800 million, or the boss scandal where 5 million liters of contaminated fuel were illegally sold to unlicensed businesses and the proceeds misappropriated, or the PPA contracts for sale scandal, or the number 12 expose by ACE investigative journalist Anas Arimi Yawanas, or the Australian Vesa Frost scandal, or the PDS scandal, through which Ghana lost a whopping $190 million. President Ekufuado has proven to be the biggest enabler and, promotion, uh, and promoter of corruption in the history of Ghana. This fact is buttressed by the latest corruption perception index of Transparency International, in which Ghana dropped two places, and the recent Afrobarometer findings by CDD Ghana, that 53% of Ghanaians think that corruption has worsened under the watch of President Ekufuado. In all this, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to remind the MPP that per the latest CPI of Transparency International, which, by the way, is the most reputable and internationally recognized corruption index in the world, President Akufuado's best score of 41 in the CPI is still worse than John Dramani Mohammed's worst score of 43 recorded in the year 2016 before the NDC exited office. And so here we know that Ghana's best ever score under the CPI was recorded in the year 2014 under His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, who they are castigating. That was a score of 48. His worst score under the CPI, which was recorded in 2016, was a score of 43. That was John Mahama's worst. But ladies and gentlemen, that worst score of 43 is still better, in fact, far better than President Ekufuado, the man who is touted as incorruptible. President Ekufuado's best ever score under the CPI of 41, recorded in 2018 and 2019. And so the MPP should stop wasting our ears on this Airbus matter. Like I said, it is empty. It doesn't involve any ex-Ghana government official. It is a case of much ado about nothing. The allegations of wrongdoing the MPP has been peddling against as officials you know, of government belonging to the NDC are only based on innuendo speculations and baseless conjecture. Ghana is a serious country. We have serious issues to deal with. And I think we must tell the MPP that enough is enough. Stop trying to equalize. Stop trying to divert attention from 
critical issues of corruption which President Ekufuado is supervising and which involves President Ekufuado, you know, himself. So having dealt with the Airbus matter, ladies and gentlemen, now let's look at the organized thievery and acts of corruption perpetrated by the Akufuado government on the people of Ghana under the guise of fighting Galamsey. Friends from the media, in the past couple of days, the public discourse in our country has been dominated by a rather unimaginable tale of over 500 excavators seized from illegal mining sites, which have sat suddenly disappeared into thin air. A scandalous, as we have thought the story of the missing 500 excavators was, the chilling and sordid revelations that have come to light since that scandal broke out go to confirm the massive rot that has characterized President Ekufuado's so-called fight against Galamse in the last three years. You would recall that at the fourth edition of our Moment of Truth series, we decried how the fight against Galamse was being ad undermined by top MPP and government officials and called for the complete overhaul of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining and other bodies, you know, uh, uh, in the fight. Sadly, it has taken the recent case of the missing 500 excavators to awaken the nation to the reality of the concerns we raised back then. This week, we have been told of the arrest of a known kingpin embedded in the anti galamse machinery of state, whose nefarious activities have long spelled doom for the fight against Galamse. We are talking here about the vice chairman of the MPP in the central region, Mr. Horis Eko Ewisi, and five other companies who have taken advantage of the state's fight against Galamse to expropriate seized equipment, including the 500 excavators, ounces of gold, thousands of weapons, and other possessions of illegal miners. Friends from the media, Further evidence has now emerged that Mr. Horace Ekowa, we see whom we have long called out as a known Galamse campaign, did not operate in a vacuum. In a video recording released on social media this week, the Minister of Environment, Science and Technology, Professor Frimpon Boateng, who doubles as the chairman of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining, is heard facilitating and promoting the Galamse business of top MPP officials, such as the General Secretary of the MPP, Mr. John Bodu, the Shante Regional Chairman of the MPP, Bernard and Pribu Esiako, aka Chama Wuntubi, several others ostensibly to generate money for the new patriotic party. This is how low this country has sunk as a result of the greed and selfishness of the ruling MPP and the corrupt Akufuado government. But first, from the media, these jaw-breaking revelations, which are a testament of how corruption has assumed epidemic proportions under President Akufuado, do not come to us as a surprise at all. We in the NDC have always known that beyond his usual flowery rhetoric, President Ekufuado has never been committed to the fight against illegal mining and corruption for that matter. You could see saying on a in fact, FM. these later developments are a vindication of our long held position that President Ekufuado's so called fight against illegal mining is a ruse calculated to appropriate the illicit Galamse trade for MPP and government officials. And let me repeat this. I am saying that the latest scandal or the 
500 missing excavators. It's only a vindication of our long-held position that President Ekufuado's so-called fight against Galamse is a ruse calculated to expropriate the illicit Galamse trade for MPP and government officials. There was no fight from the onset. It was all a sham. It was all 419. It was all a ploy by the MPP and top government officials to take over the Galamse business. And that is exactly what has happened. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us be clear on certain things. This Galamse scandal is a result of a grand scheme set up by President Ekufuadu himself to enrich MPP officials to finance the new patriotic party. This is the reason he populated the inter-ministerial committee against illegal mining and anti-Galamse committees with top MPP officials such as Ekowa we see Charles Bissu, among others. It is now crystal clear that after spending millions of taxpayers' money on the inter-ministerial committee against illegal mining, Galam Stop, Operation Vanguard, and other activities, and after killing and maiming several innocent young Ghanaians, certain top officials of the Akufuado government have teamed up with officials of the new patriotic party to callously take over the illicit Galamse trade despite its deleterious effect on the environment and human lives. Not even the hardcore evidence seen in the Galamse fraud documentary, a painstaking investigation by ACE investigative journalist Anas Arimi Yawanas, in which president, in which a presidential staffer, sorry, Charles Bissu, was indicted. Let me take this paragraph again. It's very important. Not even the hardcore evidence seen in the Galamse fraud documentary, a painstaking investigation by ACE investigative journalist Anas Arimiyao Anas, in which a presidential staffer Charles Bissu was indicted, was enough to move President Ekufuado into swift action in order to salvage the wobbly fight against Galamse. Apart from the Galamse kingpin Charles Bissu, several actors within the Kufuado government have in one way or the other compromised the fight against Galamse whilst President Kufuado looks on unconcerned. It will be recalled that sometime in 2018, the Minister of Local Government, Honorable Hegia Alima, stated publicly that some MMDCs of this government were actively engaged in Galamse and indicated that she was going to publicly disclose their identities and sanction them. The NDC didn't say this. Some agency didn't say this. This was put out by the Minister for Local Government, Honorable Hegia Alima Ham, herself, that MMDCs of the Kufuado government were engaged in Galamse. She promised that she was going to name and shame and ensure that those MMDCs are brought to book. However, till date, we still don't know the identities of the said MMDCs the minister talked about and what President Ekufuado has done about that. Again, the former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Peter Amewu, also made a startling observation that members of Operation Vanguard had been compromised by illegal miners. Additionally, the chief executive officer of the Forestry Commission, Mr. Kojo Ousu Efriye, sometime last year, stated that certain higher ups in this government were undermining the Galamse fight and were actually aiding the return of illegal miners to our forest. All these pieces of evidence, ladies and gentlemen, pointed to the fact that the fight against illegal mining was heading in the wrong direction. Yet, 
President Ekufuado refused Ekufuado to bring the corporate to, to serve as a deterrent to others. This is why we are where we are today. By failing to punish the likes of Charles Bissou, the members of the Operation Vanguard team who were reported by the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources at the time as having been compromised by illegal miners. President Ekufuado emboldened more officials of the MPP and government to engage in Galamse with brazen impunity. And the results, the results of that is what we are seeing. Now the questions, ladies and gentlemen, we must ask ourselves are, what happens to the millions of taxpayers, millions of taxpayers' money that has been wasted on this so-called fight against Galamse in the last three years. Because we've been making budgetary allocation for Operation Vanguard, for the Interministerial Committee against Illegal Mining, for Galamstop, and all these bodies. We've wasted millions of taxpayers' money on this so-called fight. It is very clear that the fight has failed because of the greed and selfishness of President Ekufuado and his cabal of family and friends. It could see same now, as what happens to the taxpayers' money which has been wasted? What can appease the blood of innocent Ghanaians who have lost their lives through this fraudulent fight against Galamse, including Major Maxwell Mahama? May his soul rest in perfect peace. Again, how about legal small-scale miners whose excavators have been burned and livelihoods destroyed. What happens to them? Because President Ekufuado, when he assumed office, supposedly bought into the media, you know, a campaign by a group of media men at the time against Galamse, promised us that he was going to wage a brutal war against the menace. And because we all know the deleterious effect that Galamse has for our water bodies, you know, for water security and human lives. We all supported him. The media supported him. The chieftains institution supported him. Even the opposition supported him. At least to get this one thing done right. And through this fight, we allocated millions to the committee, like I've already indicated, Operation Vanguard and all that. And Operation Vanguard, on Galamstor, and all these bodies went into, you know, the Galamse size of illegal miners to clamp down on the activities to protect the environment and all that. In the process, people were shot and killed. People died. Major Mahama died as a result of this. Excavators were burned. And some of the excavators which were burned belonged to not Galamseyers, but small scale miners who were engaged in illegal enterprise. They had their license to engage in that. And yet, their livelihoods were destroyed. And some have never recovered and may never be able to recover until the day or until the end of this world. And so this is a monumental betrayal of the trust of Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. For our government, our president and his people, a president who told us that he has placed his presidency on the line, and wouldn't mind losing the next election as a result of this Galamsey fight. We had faith in him. Our chiefs had faith in him. The media had faith in him. Only to be defrauded. Only for he and his people to turn around and engage in Galamsey with impunity, destroy our water bodies. Look at the river Brim. Look at the river Pra. Look at the river Fensu today. Look at the color of these river bodies. They are as brown as chocolate. The turbidity levels have worsened. And we are not talking about ordinary Ghanaians engaging in this menace. No, we are talking about MPP top officials engaging in Galamse with this impunity. Not with Ghanaians, but with Chinese. I'm sure you have seen a video documentary by Joy News in which the driver of John Bodu was caught somewhere in the Ankwaso Forest Reserve destroying our forest cover, you know, and, and, and doing galamse. When he was caught by the police, he tried to bribe them with an amount of 40,000 Ghana cities. Thank God 
we still have men of conscience in the Ghana police service who apprehended him and blew the lid. And clearly, that driver, that poor driver, cannot be the owner of that concession. That concession belongs to Mr. John Buedo. And we know of several of such concessions which belong to people like Wun to me and several other top officials of the MPP. Their own people like Kennedy Akompre Kwa Japon have said so. When we talk about these things, it is seen as, oh, coming from the opposition, so it is politics as usual. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no longer about politics as usual. This is about our water bodies. This is about water security. In fact, there are reports that Ghana Water Company has started rationing water in some of these areas already. And there are reports that if care is not taken, in the next 10 years, Ghana would have to import portable water for us to get water to drink. Who are those doing this sacrilegious harm to this country? President Ekufuado. Because of greed. All the monies you have stolen were not enough for you. Through the boss scandal, the Mary scandal, the PDS scandal, and all these scandals were not enough. Now you are selling excavators. You are stealing tricycles. You are engaging galamsey. Yeah, what yeah, kind of greed up. is this? What kind of greed is this? And so, we are very sad. We are deeply concerned about the damage that this government is wrecking on this country. If care is not taken by the time they are kicked out by the good people of this country, in the 2020 elections, there will be nothing left. Our water bodies would have been destroyed. And so we should all be concerned, whether you belong to the NDC, the CPP, the PNC, or even the MPP, you should be concerned. Because this is about future generations. It is about the sustainability of this country. Certainly, ladies and gentlemen, President Ekufuado, who plays his presidency on the line, must account for this fight, must account to Ghanaians for providing, by providing answers to these nagging questions. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, any government with its name would have by now sacked or caused the arrest of the Minister of Environment, Science and Technology, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boateng, who has become both a player and an enabler of the illicit Galamsey trade. He is both a player and an enabler in Galamsey. It would be a complete waste of time for us to call for the dissolution of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining and all anti galamsey tax force, such as Operation Vanguard, Galamstop, and so on. Because as for this, our president, President Ekufuado, he sees no evil and hears no evil when it comes to TV and corruption by his officials. But all those involved in the stealing of the 500 excavators and the stinking rot that has engulfed Akufuado's fraudulent fight against Galamsey must know that the day of accountability and reckoning is fast approaching. God will never forgive them and the good people of this country will never forgive them. It doesn't matter how long it takes, they will pay for their crimes under the government of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Thank you very much for coming. Sure. Please, let's kindly stay put and have the three version before the question time. So I will do a very quick summary of... Do you have questions? I will do it very quick, very quick, just five minutes, five minutes each of today's press conference. I will say that I will share my story. 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 Se excavators mako 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 500 a a bain we e ka se wako e ti a galamse o mo chichi sizi ye e di kogu various yas e wo takrade o bo a se nengkraino a bedo a bonten se excavators ni mu 500 
ayera. Tin se mi enu wenti ni eto ya sa frem na me se ho kura no. Me start e fi Airbus asem. Ah, e da pono so. Abusi afo Airbus asem ni nyina ne sen. Asem ni nyina e fa. Airbus ajuma ye fo. Eni omu agents a. Wo ma juma yem omo etietia UK emra so. Emre bi aye fre no OECD rules and the UK bribery act of 2007 asem ni nyina no no emfa ga na ban ho emfa ga na penimu bia ho as a party yaje mere akin kind court judgment from UK any US e was the same way ho na o kind judgment ni nyina wo be hu se ne to fa bom no de akofa airbus asem ya ben nyina ne se e ko see say on between the year 2009 and 2015 Airbus for FA agents. Omo an kasa ni fi omo pimfa omo agent. Se omo mwa omo na omo inti mi meto aeroplanes bi Emma Ghana ye military. Ti omo an ekofa omo agents na Ghana an kaho because they are private company omo di omo. Di ato sumi yenu no omo fasa omo agents na mrai wase nka omo disu no omo eni so. I'm right, just we was obi wo qualification bi and now say agent awo fa ni se oni obi wo ayon ko fa bi do omo mo eni sa amra ne so ebiem agreement a omo ne ga na ban sen san ye no omo en fan sie ye kan wo mu se agents a omo di company ne nim no ye wi e bibia na e ba so for sanka omo sika omo be mo commission ye friend success based commission 5% san se se ye ne te se ga na ha wo pese wo han dan e wo is legal na wo pen tem wa ko fa agents e bo amena me pedan o bo awo ma wonya wo se o metua commission ana me wo japade bi a me pese me ton me pese me ton ni ntem ti no me pe agent ama na bo ame agent to ton ma me a wo commission ye se sa na e ba sa se metie but judgment ne kire se o mu tu o mu agents ka no o mu tu a agent no ka ma ne bro so instead o mu be tu a agent ne ka be se 3.85 million euros no mu tu a Instead of betu ya agent neka be se 3 million euros no omutu ya agent neka 3.8 million euros let just say be 800,000 euros bia bro so we ye omo ankasa nsise ya omo ayede omo buso emfa Ghana aban penyi bia ho ti se ohra asem ni mu yi ade di kan Ghana aban penyi mu bia ni wa yabo ni din e wo UK SFO reports and now say court judgment say wa asem we hu se obisa bribe ana wo je bribe ana wa fun mre bia gana ni bia ni wa ni din wo so called government official wana mpp for abo ni din abo ni din abo ni din a omo ye se 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 na na bo e ye sa speculations ni conjecture no onu mpo yanka se wa je bribe ana wa bi sa bribe ana wa ye bo ni bi ti ebusu afo se ne ye ko ye wiwe mu ni wiwe na beto abo ntin se government official wana ko ye sa me je fi ana chief bainia en fa so bia ni so because on tomra onye bo ni bia en na ye ade di kan a e wo se ye hyene so the atosu mi enu so ne se se wo hwe judgment ni nyina mu a wo se gana anhwere sika bia eni ba bia se wo se ade anke ye to no empim du no obi di bibitu so ma ye to no e ko fi ma du on a sempa f and as ade wo se anke ye to no teku no obi di bibitu so ma ye to ne sempo a in fact o kin kan ni nyina judgment ni nkan ni ba bia se gana boka be se wo de compare judgment no in relation to other countries, because I bas for Omudi Juma or Malaysia, Indonesia, and Taiwan. Now, what share court judgment? You know, Omudu, eh, fa Omudu medio Omudi in the same manner as well. Unlike Ghana, now what they say, Omudu is to add Omudi, and my airline company is to be a Juma for. But in the Ghana case, you know, they are going to make you a bribe. In Ghana, your case, you know, you are going to say Ghana book a bia, because the bushofu no kwasi mne say, sa air bas transaction here, Ghana buying at that time. At the top military aircrafts, at the ma, ya straf for. So nebe yomu ko peace keep yomu benye biya ko accident si we stream na or emergency or si eko phobia ybe nya jet amana ko ne diake kaho no. It follow public procurement law. It was central tender review board procurement for yomu due diligence. Omu yomu internal value for money. I approve ubi biya. And so nebe eko parliament. Eko parliament. So I'm reno MPP member of parliament for a coupon. Honorable William Boama, on the crown of second emotion, my parliament for so bobo, and Sakra never called parliament in a bush of four. Sam Breno, a by lawyer penny, attorney general and minister for justice, honorable Martin Amidu, which I keep parliamentary hands at. I don't know, 
or ye crata and my legal opinion and sanya de transaction e kwa mrashi bidwim. Ah ye de ko yesono em mrashi bidwa fo eji tum. Inti kana na na frakadan bianya day am gana moka gana lusu kapre. Tia no sone ya de tosum yunu. De atosum yan sana sone se eni in krata ni mube bi ase. Gana bai penny mubi eko fa agent juma ana ekutuya agent bika. Eni mube bi asa. Enti abusu ya fuwa se, eba asa se mi. Number one, yankana wo mube bi asa gane ni bia ye mubone waje bribe ana wafo mumra. Yankana wo mube bi asa gana aboka. Eni yankana wo mube bi asa gana ni bia fo mumra na gana banyo wosa amen wafo mumra diya. Nani ya se, eba asa fuwa ni omu agent akwa yen sheshe ye. Ena wosa esi ketuye ni mu afum yuke mra. Efa gana fuwa mubeni. I was MP before the assembly with Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, they are with the objective of diverting attention from Kronu Bebriba and Kosunansi. If I am obey, when I can vote because she is not good to be him, because be being where one same we move to say, and this is my thing. I am on it. Did you hear? Can I say? And someone MP pimp and you for what? Can I say? Ya boabi an someone mo kekano. Omo kano wa. Omo ni ni na subia. Inti yasu ye ti ni wa. Ni nimse gana for so ebeti ni wa because se no krebi wo mu a nka ye ya abo abia samu na be press conference me ye sure se ka by now police if watch say ni pakro ne dada dada ko me sa me jenfia me nyebo ni bia kra no wo hwe me matwe ya me di jina he ya yetimi suma police if won so mo mo be chi me enti report aban obi a wo ma ye bo ni ya ya abo abia samu na nko be press conference ka samre ya chi obi ye nchi obi hwehwe mu bia ye nchi obi no so let you know se bibia ni e ya nansesem and yeah, and also any idea you did on mine. It's very irresponsible, very reckless for a ruling government to engage in such cheap politics with the objective of equalizing, you know. Enti the idea no be any day, any be any boni be a. Na any idea you best say madaje wa hunti idea no no ABC ya ne yako galanse ya semwa edawo, which for us is the most important issue. Abuzi yafu, enche yokra. And yet, he said, My penny could for the gallant saying to Kwana or no Nessia said, Ocon. A good sea gallant on a say if you dear excavators, I dear gallam sea. Ah, a buying committees no as is your preaching vanguard for a season. A mu Marco 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 five hundred. Ah, a buying way chair, or would it be called Boise, or would it be called Taqua, or would it be bank line? Ya de share a bain pen you four mo a bain a crashing pen you four woho and sa. A bain we ya betwa nan se se match re se. San fidye ni nina a yera o mu hube biyako. Ye nim se ne and o man pen yoku fwa do excavators. Eti mi nyan tabain. Eti mi two three we asi mu ha ye unhu diya. A jis mp before unkwa ni biti match re ya se. Because excavator nye ka a ketwe biya. Uwe ti biyotri ni here here ya fa lor ni kwan so. Ye nina ye nim sa. Ube move excavate a free mining sites. And I will be move excavate a free cry. Ha. Ako central region here. And na baby, I would do could be an pen baby. I just walk behind low bed. And yes, sir. Now what they are to so their transport. TC day. And a police if only baby excavators war. DC is new baby excavators war. Excavators and the baby I want to see the panel. Near to Mrs. Excavators 500 is low bed. So. Efa krom shi polisi ni biya ncheke u biya ncheke shi ni ya kase excavators na ira yehu e ya nadjo ma anasem krono bo katase che vini mini pro ya e koso andabayi wu ya ya kan gana fobi no munti eno eno hon aba eni yehu because no kwa se mdese galam se infidye e ya excavators no oma ton wache nsi ache sika ne di ama omo hon oma ton wache di omu iti ni nkantre ese excavators no a yera Abrabi sine, ye mwudu wu biya responsible. Ye guswa ye bobo asem wwe huwa. E na video bi baba bonte. Ansa kwa na video ni be baba bonte no. Abayi wwe ya ankasa baba bonte be kachire ye nse. MPP regional vice chairman. In central region. Ye freno. Honorable. Honye honorable. Horace Eko wa wisi. Oye MPP vice chairman. Ya chene se. Ono. Ah, or di or more or more just excavators in the name. Or no excavators in where we are at already. 
Ye chen no so ye anche ono kwa ye chen. Nenan fufo bebe omu nina ye MPP4 chocho uru pa. Eti ye guswa ye bobo hona ni ye sansu hon video. A wuti mi wuse. Se na video si tiye. Fi video ni si tiye. Na ekowa wusi na ane rekordo ye de na adye babo nti. Se ene mwa cheme na mo pese mugu me ni mwase. Na mo yusumi ya se sacrificial lambo dia. Ene ya jame mkwa na meji ye ni mwase no. I will go down with more men and more girls. I'm seeing you now. Ah, so what's your video? Ni ya? Gana pe ni mupa? Ye ni na ye di obo ni ni di emano. Ono abo professor from Pon Boati. Sergeant, she said we are seeing you now. Obo ni ni di ese is a very good surgeon. Ah, ye de a juma girl. I'm seeing a juma yashan esa. Ono aso ni ye minister for environment science and technology. Che se oni e kwa wisi di mkomo. Se e kwa wisi ni tiyati ya nana wapeso obono kwa ye ni. Na waka achen se minister. Wana waka achen vese ye MPP party no e nye sika. Enti ye ma MPP fwonko ye sika ne sika na ye mfanko bwa MPP. Enu nti no. Me mko bwa na John Bwadu ni gala mse business awa ye no enkoso. John Bwadu ye MPP tre tre mfo penye. Chama wuntu mi gala mse juma awa ye no enkoso. Ene di ya keka hon. Ama mpampa join news for ni nse mchua fobi ni mjishwe mwa ma ye. Ya kwa kwa che jwa mbuwe dui. Papa ya debi oti radio su ni TV su o kasa na no ya ya ye. Se ne driver jina kwa ye mforest reserve. E ye galam se wun siyo mkwa ye m. E se ye environment. These are the people ruling Ghana today. Ya busu ya fwa. Pese ni kumunya edufri penti no. Ye nse gana nsiyo. Ye nse gana kwa ye. Yanya galam se tan 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 ye wia yan sanson ton excavators en chemayo to we die enya ndi sifo na akofa ba omo ankasa ena unyame apo omo ho ntoma ena omo ankasa de omo nsem we hye dem ye den e ba abonten ene ne gana fo nyina ehu enti ene enframa abo ama akoko to ada ho ama ye hu se sa galam se ntoko na no mampenye kufu ado se oku no now what the presidency are two on the line. Sa ni ni na na ye four one nine. Sa na ni ni na na ye frakadam na ye hudo rather same. Na oni a dream papa be a se Santo kwano obeye. Shada ye se maba mi pesika ma mi party four. Enu tino me shada njia se me be kwe tia galam se na ye ye ne sa pamu pamu small scale miners omu omu concessions. Amo wa license da hon. Ni ya de ji ome ju me fi omon sa. Na MPP fwa fa. Se MPP fwa fa na omu nye si kana. Ome nye bi abre me me oma mpenye an ome nye bi bi abroa MPP. Bo taya ane si ne ni su nina anono. To take over the galamse trade for MPP fwa. That is it. Nene, di ema ye di yaw. Di ema ye di yawa. Ye ni abre, ye ni aso kone se abusyan fwa. True. Galam se ntuko ya oma mpenye kufu wado kachire ya se okono. Gana adi siye bibri wawwa oma shiro omu nkwa. Mungi na mokai. Mejo mahama. Wu ya ya ya. No yeso jeni ya de nako denche mbuwa simpate mwo bebi se. Onko kunti ya galam se. Galam se ntuko enti. Enda ni pabo ni fubi. Eku ni ya ya ya. Apa fronda kwa abin hei. Ye bo gana mranti ye chuo. Se yeso omu ye galam se fuo. Opresi vanga for chesi amau for mamu kutoa mrembo kwa mbi wuye. Sema chuo for mwa nse ni yeye mwa nimse. Kumasi yekumini pasa. Ane bi mumpo yeye ndi simranti yeso mwa yegalamse. Diye yeye wamu kwa nse. Small scale miners wamu diaga na mrembo mwa kwa nse mwa yega na fomu timi ya small scale mining when you have the license impono. Wamu po mampeni yaku for the two years or se buya ni yuma. Yashidi excavators. Wamu ano makwaje bosi ya wabank ene bosi ya na riyomo. And then remember that name, ma. If you know man who be an ear bomb for life, I am sure we won't even recover him. Now, wow, we man peni aye ni na ye ni jidiye we mu. Now we no party for mu di abrosi. What kunipa? What shinipa mfidi? Omo a wamo amu moja abroso ni akumaya de ye inti minkai. Now we we chire. Now now we ne China for ne ye galamsi. Ghana for ni abrofo ne ye galamsi. So Ghana for be deja eda jail. Ghana for be u. Akrebi, eh ya fatherless or ya janka because of this so-called fight. Na wo ya sa, into onyame do bo nebeche wo. Na gana fo so do bo nebeche wo. Enya di omo debeche wo da. Into ebusyon fo, eh ya so clear. 
so man penye ku fodo wadi Ghana hwamo galam se ntoka no ka se or the presidency be to on the line for it no wa feel it e wase the presidency no e bo no nti ye ka kire o mo mo ka sa de we hu nyina ne se e mo mo nwen se because that because the corruption clearing agent is the president now nti o be for mo hu adi enchenche e wona fe bo ni wo ensuma en fa won na mre be di aban be sesa o man penyi fofro be ba ye friend of his excellency john dramani mahama Ah, oh, no, dear. On so so galam say so. Na on so so katase shene proye so. Na wu biya be kwa kwa jina mre nim. Na wu yi ni huwa no. Se bu suya fo, ya frem wa, na diya wu wu nina no no. Ya damu wa si. Thank you very much. We'll just take uh, four questions. Either English or Chief. But we are just taking four. A Semba FM. A Semper FM. A Semper FM. I'll start. Okay, Parker, you have a question. So I will start with Kwajo from uh, City. Yes, first of all, you asked the question that we've been talking about nepotism and, chroni uh, and chronism. And, uh, but in this case, uh, the UK SFO found that the said intermediary five was the brother or is the brother of uh, 
someone who was a government official at the time of the transaction. So what do we say about that? When we spoke about nepotism the last time, if at any time we speak about the unprecedented nepotism that President Ekufuado is supervising, we don't talk about um, relatives of President Ekufuado who are living in the United Kingdom, do we? We don't talk about that. We talk about relatives of President Ekufuado who have been given juicy appointments in his government. We talk about relatives of President Ekufuado who are using their relationship with the president to take over credit card businesses and to, uh, and to amass wealth at the expense of the Ghanaian taxpayer. So the mere fact that you are a government official doesn't mean that your brother or your relative living in another country cannot work. <laughs> that is not nepotism. That is not the meaning of that. If, if the suggestion was that Ga 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 government of Ghana engage intermediary five, who is related to a government of Ghana official, then that is nepotism. Yes. The government of Ghana did not engage intermediary five. We didn't engage intermediary five. We didn't pay intermediary five. In fact, you, you understand, we didn't deal with any intermediary five. So where is the nepotism? Nepotism is when a man clothed with power abuses that power by, you know, giving out juicy appointments or benefits to people who are related to him. And so if that government was not the, 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 the entity that engaged the said intermediary, where is the nepotism? By the mere, so it means that once you are a government official, even if you have relatives in Burkina, Niger, China, they cannot work in those countries. They cannot work with any private company. No. So, and, and let's understand that the findings of violation of the OECD rules relative to the relationship between that intermediary five and the said government official one. Those findings were findings made against Airbus. It was Airbus which didn't observe those rules, not the government of Ghana. No, let's, no let me listen to you. It's fine. Yes. No, 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 please. No, no, let me, let me listen to you. No, go ahead. Exactly. Uh -huh. But who brought the Spanish company, Intermediary 8, on board? Airbus. Airbus. Yes. So how can the government of Ghana be blamed but for that? <laughs> yes, but, but, if they still, but if they still work, they still work with Intermediary 5. S please, it's, it's very important. So hold on. So Airbus, Airbus went through a shell, Intermediary 8, and misrepresented work done by Intermediary 5 as having been done by Intermediary 8 and paid intermediary eight only for that payment to be remitted to intermediary five. I read the judgment, I, but how does the government of Ghana come in? That payment was still made by Airbus. That engagement of agents was still done by Airbus. So, Kojo, we can come back to you, but that is my answer to this question. But for the, second, for the nepotism, the parliamentary has done, it captured that government official one actually introduced intermediary five to Airbus when they went to London. So clearly, the reason why Airbus had to deal with Intermediary 5 because government official 1 has endorsed its credibility and capability to deliver. No, the question is, did, government, did the government of Ghana at the time engage any intermediary? No. So if we didn't engage any intermediary <laughs> and we didn't pay any intermediary, <laughs> what is the issue? Let us move on. Kapaka, let us move on. Then, then, then you, 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 you ask a second question. That you ask the second question, that that you don't understand it when we say that government of Ghana didn't lose any money. It's very important that we listen. This is a press conference, so let's be very accommodating, please. Your second question was that you don't agree when we say we don't agree with us when we say that lose any money. You said one thing, you're not bringing chairman's abon. So I'll answer the two. The first thing you said was that why are we saying we didn't lose money? Because at the end of the day, the intermediaries were paid. Is that what, is that what you're saying? I'm saying at the end of the day, the report established that uh, intermediary five eventually got the money. What, what was, the, the sure. What money was he paid? He was paid a success-based commission amounting to 3.8 million euros. By who? Airbus. So if Airbus receives payments, and out of their promise they pay their agents, is that a financial loss to Ghana? No. 
it is not. So we didn't lose any money. You understand? So that's the second point. Then, then you are saying that. Then, then you are saying that. Then you are saying that Honorable Mr. Chairman Bonsu said that um, the, the the price of that plane. We can let that pass, okay? Because I would have referred you to the hands out of that day, where Oseche Mensa Bonsu was giving the appropriate answers to that issue. He was told, he was told by members of parliament with military background on the floor, that you cannot go on the internet and quote the shell price of an aircraft and come and compare that to the operational price of an aircraft. The two are not the same, and you can find that in this parliamentary has that you know that recorded the pieces so that's it then um a question was asked about whether or not um we will raise issues of conflict of interest relative to honorable martin abk amidu I mean, who are we to advise the erudite martin amidu on article 284 of the 1992 constitution i mean he's a very astute constitutional lawyer i know he understands the law I'm not sure, I don't even know whether he thinks that it is even necessary to conduct investigations in this matter, knowing what he knows about this transaction. But that is solely a discretionary matter for him. As for us, we have told you that this matter is empty. Because to the extent that no government of Ghana official is cited for bribery, corruption, or any criminal offense, what has this matter got to do with Ghana? That, the, that agents and employees of a certain company have violated UK law. And so what? What does that... Come again? again? No, it is not in the report. Uh -huh. Intended to use. Intended to use. Okay. Uh, but you know that, that in law, intent... Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you have an intent to... No, please, please, let's have order. Could you, could you let's have order. Oh, so are we to control the intentions of people who work with us? So, so the point is that the fact that somebody had an intention to bribe somebody. In this room, somebody may have an intention to bribe you. But it doesn't mean that you have taken a bribe. The mere fact that somebody has an intention to commit a wrong doesn't mean the wrong has been committed. People have a lot of intentions. People have a lot of intentions. Even intentions to marry don't always materialize. So somebody had an intention to compromise a government official. So it means that the government official was, uh, was compromised. In the case of Taiwan, Malaysia, Indonesia, it was stated express, exp expressly, explicitly that people were bribed, people were compromised. But in the case of Ghana, nobody said that. And you have people sitting in their offices at asylum down, mentioning the names of, do they know better than the SFO of UK? or the Crown Court of South Oak, which determined this matter. So no such finding was made because no such evidence or fact exists. So people should stop hallucinating or inventing certain things, which doesn't exist. Then finally, you, Parker, you said that, um, you said that the identity, the identity, I said the identity doesn't matter, but is it material? But don't we think that Ghanaians deserve to know. I said that the identity of the said government official one is not material to this discussion because the said government official one has not been cited for any criminal offense. It is in that context that I made that claim. Now, information is good. It is for that reason that the, uh, the right to information has been passed. Is that, is, is that not the case? Uh -huh. But we have not published any reports and we have not conducted any investigations. And no government of Ghana official was questioned relative to these investigations. How are we to know the said government official one? So in any case, no, we are not denying anything. I'm trying to say that it doesn't lie in our place. It is not our business. Or we don't even have the capacity to tell you who that government official is. It is for Airbus or the UK SFO or the Crown Court of South Oak, or the District Court of Columbia who have gone through these issues to come out and say that the said S government official one is A, B, C, D. But they, for good reason, said, we will not put the name of that person out. You know why? Because of the principle of Odi Oterim pattern. One of the rules of natural justice, that a man cannot be judged on head. The fact that allegations have been made against a man who has not been heard 
You think it is fair for us to put the name of that government official one out? What about if he doesn't even know the so-called intermediary five? And so in law, the UK itself agreed that it would be in breach of law for them to put out the identities of the said intermediaries or the so-called government official one because they are side of so, so, so simple. Yes, please. Any, any, no. Oh, no, let's take a final one. My general secretary likes to say something. I think I should repeat that. He says he doesn't like answering speculative questions. <laughs> I'm learning from him, so I also don't answer questions based on ifs. Let's talk about facts. We are not here to talk about speculations or ifs. You understand? But let me make it clear here that as a political party, we do not support corruption, whether in government or in opposition. And President Mahama demonstrated that when he was in office by prosecuting his own appointees for allegations of corruption. A standard President Ekufuado has, can never meet. And so, if there is any evidence of wrongdoing on the part of any ex-government official, irrespective of the person's political affiliation, you can trust the NDC to support any credible investigations into such a matter and to punish, punish such persons. But in this case, no such evidence exists. We are only being invited by the MPP and their hirelings to interrogate speculations and innuendos. And that is why we are saying that this matter is empty. It doesn't offer any evidence of wrongdoing on the part of anybody associated with the Mahama or the Mills administration and should not be used as a diversionary you know, strategy, should not be allowed to, to be used by the MPP as a diversionary strategy. But if President Ekufuado cares to investigate this matter, which clearly, which clearly contains no fact or evidence of wrongdoing on the part of any government of Ghana official, we are telling him that there are so many issues to investigate. He must start by telling us why he himself gave executive approval for an Ameri miscellaneous deal which was bloated by an amount of $800 million. He must tell us, you and I, Kwaju, why he has given $24 million, equivalent to 136 million Ghana cities, to his in-law for a private hotel which offers no benefit for the taxpayers of this country. We think that that hotel even belongs to President Ekufuado himself. You understand? And those are the things he must, be, he must be speaking to, he must be investigating. He should tell us why through his negligence and or complicity, the PDS transaction was terminated and led to Ghana losing a whopping $190 million. You will investigate $190 million. You have not arrested anybody. The PDS has still not accounted for the over 500 million Ghana cities they collected from ECG customers. You will investigate that. You are going to investigate what? Success-based commission of 3.8 million euros paid by a private company to their own agents. That is what President Ekufuado prioritizes. It is for the good people of Ghana to decide. So ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for coming. We are most grateful for your time. If you have any further questions, we can meet and then and have that question.